Sometimes they equate being a wrestling fan to being an NFL fan, and here's what I mean, is that no matter whether your team sucks, is middle of the road, on their way to becoming a championship contender, are a championship contender, or are the defending world champions, every offseason it never fails, fans get as excited for the NFL draft as they do anything else, because it's always the concept of that fresh face who that next star is potentially going to be. No matter how many stars there might be, no matter how good things might be going, it's always an emphasis or a focus on what's next, the future. Even if the present is really damn good, there's still always that concern, that thought about the future. You know, that's kind of how it is for us as NFL fans, and I think that's how it is for us as wrestling fans too. No matter how good or bad the current situation might be, we're always looking to the future. We're always looking for that next guy. We're always looking for that next big star. And I understand that because if you're not evolving, you're not changing, you're not growing, you're ultimately dying. And part of evolving, changing, and growing as a brand, as a product, is to continue with an influx of new, invigorating kind of top stars. And this is something that we established on numerous occasions for years that the WWE has really struggled with, mostly because of their own doing. And that's why that product of the WWEs in recent years really kind of has, frankly, had that stagnant kind of stale feeling to it. Because it is stagnant. It is stale. The same guys being featured in the same spots in the same way, and there's not a whole lot of new, fresh top stars. And that's very, very bad for the product. And I think most everyone would acknowledge and accept this. This is something the WWE's really struggled with. And it's why so many of us as fans always harp on this fact that the WWE fails to produce new big stars because the product needs new big stars. The company needs new big stars. And most importantly of all, for us as WWE or wrestling fans, we need and want new big stars. So now I look at a guy like Neville who's come onto the scene of WWE post-WrestleMania, and I start to look at him, and I really start to wonder, could he be one of WWE's next big things? Could he be, potentially, WWE's next big thing? You know, I'll, I've said before, I'll say it again, I wasn't really a huge fan of his down at NXT. I just didn't really get into him and what he was about. I just maybe felt like in NXT that he just kind of blended in with the crowd, you know, I didn't really see it, but now that he's actually on the main roster, I see a guy that can bring a lot of positive things to the table and some things that indicate to me potentially that he could be WWE's next big thing. Like, first off, he's a young guy. His youth serves him well. He's still only 28 years old at a time where the WWE has many of their top guys being featured in top spots that are either on the wrong side of 30 or 35 or have just been on the scene for an incredibly long time, here's a fresh face. Yes, he's been on the independent scene for a decade or so, but still under the age of 30. So there's time to invest in him, knowing that if you get him to a certain point at maybe age 30 or so, you could have several years of him being a big-time moneymaker for your company. Another thing I like about Neville in terms of the current WWE landscape is that his style is very unique. While there are a lot of shorter guys like him, and size isn't quite as emphasized as it once was, and a lot of guys do flips and a lot of guys do kicks, nobody quite does what Neville does in the WWE. In some ways, an Evan Bourne type of guy, but he goes well above and beyond anything I think that Evan Bourne could do. And that unique type of style could serve him very, very well to a point where if even the WWE isn't doing all that much with him from a booking standpoint, and if they're frankly trying to sabotage him, that unique style could still help him stand out, could still help him transcend the doo-doo of WWE's creative process and allow him to latch onto fans, resonate with fans, connect with fans, and become a bit of a drawing power, become a star. He comes with a following from the independent scene, similar to guys like CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins. And when you look at it, honestly, these are the last three guys that the WWE has really put a lot of emphasis on to try and make new stars out of. CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, all having a certain type of package they brought to the table and bringing with them 
a devoted following from the independent scene, which is even more important with the importance of the WWE Network to the company today, knowing that the majority of the fans that actually pay for subscriptions to that network are those hardcore fans that do pay attention to the independent scene. You know, guys like Punk, Brian, now Rollins, and now maybe somebody like a Neville fits into the category of somebody that appeals to the WWE more uh, as a way to bridge the gap to those hardcore fans that they resent but can't live without more than what they've had maybe in previous years. And it's more important to this company. Again, you've had the WWE kind of de-emphasize size a little bit. Don't get me wrong. They still love the guys that look like Roman Reigns and have muscles like Roman Reigns. But if we're being perfectly honest here, that's not as important to this company as it once was. I don't think anybody could sit there and say that the only guys getting pushed or featured now are the muscle guys are the big steroid freaks because as much as anybody might want to say well look at what Roman Reigns is getting look at what Roman Reigns is getting Seth Rollins is the one that ultimately won the title at WrestleMania 31 and Roman Reigns is feuding with the big show now let's cut it out you also look at the fact that uh, you have NXT and Triple H in particular is trying to establish the importance of NXT going forward as that developmental territory for the WWE. Here's Neville, a guy who is at the top of that developmental territory. You wouldn't think you'd want to bring him up and sabotage him, although you might sit there and wonder with what they've done with the tag team like, let's say, the Ascension. But with the continuing importance of NXT and some of the guys that have recently pro produced out of NXT, such as the Bray Wyatts of the worlds, the Seth Rollins of the worlds, the Roman Reigns of the worlds, the Dean Ambrose's of the worlds. You would hope that would open up some eyes in the WWE offices and saying maybe that we're not getting total crap from down there. And as a result, this guy is ready. Maybe we need to go with him. We need to be confident in him. But you're also talking about a guy here, too, that brings something from an international standpoint. This is a guy from Newcastle, England. So he's British, meaning that he appeals to a big, important segment of the WWE international audience and again when we're talking about the importance of the WWE Network not only the hardcore fans domestically but the hardcore fans internationally are an incredibly important uh, asset for the WWE to have in the fold going forward so when you look at a guy like Neville he's a guy that can reach out to those types of fans that can help broaden the WWE's international base and the best thing of all for Neville is there's a lack of familiarity fatigue where you have guys like Sheamus and Wade Barrett that should be those type of guys that should be helping in that. You know, Sheamus has been around for a while now. Wade Barrett, frankly, has been around for a while now, if you think about it, over five, almost five years now. So there's a lot of familiarity there and a bit of a fatigue when it comes to them. Now, Neville, again, when I talk about those new fresh, fresh faces being so important, Here's a guy that doesn't have the baggage of a Sheamus for fans or a Wade Barrett for fans. So you can branch out and appeal to some of those international fans, therefore helping your performance with the WWE Network, therefore also helping emphasize the importance of NXT and why people should be tuning into the network to watch NXT. You know, And just a lot of things that make me wonder and make me think that maybe Neville actually could be one of those next big things for WWE. I do have to say, though, uh, I don't want to go too crazy here and put the cart too far ahead of the horse because there are some major concerns. First and foremost, when I look at Neville, I have a concern about his ability to adapt to different types of opponents. And that's an important characteristic to have. Because let's say with a Daniel Bryan, if Daniel Bryan didn't have the ability to adapt to different types of op opponents and different types of styles, even if he was Daniel Bryan, most people would have been farting at the thought of him going from being a guy that didn't even make it halfway through the first season of NXT to sitting there and in the course of several months becoming the Breakfast Club killer, beating Cena, beating Triple H, and then Batista Norton, those last three all in the same night. He's a Sheamus away from being the true king of the Breakfast Club killers. You know, But Daniel Bryan had the ability to adapt to different types of opponents and I'm not sold yet that Neville will be able to do that. Only time will tell. Who knows what will happen with him in WWE, what types of positions he'll be put in, and what he'll actually do. 
I think when we also talk about Daniel Bryan, this is kind of a concern too, because when you look at the WWE, they might have some concerns about a guy like Neville and the style that he works with in terms of whether or not they can count on him on a consistent basis as a top guy because of some of the injury problems that, let's say, a Daniel Bryan is currently having, even going back to CM Punk, and it seemed like his body was beaten up and broken down quite a bit. Are they going to be concerned that if they go too far with Neville, that his body is going to start breaking down with the type of style that he works, and they're not going to be able to count on him because just as soon as they get ready to push him, then he's out of action for three months or six months. And that's going to be something that ultimately Neville's going to have to prove. He's going to have to prove that he could stay healthy. He could have to prove that he's going to be somebody that can be counted on to be there week after week, month after month. That's something that you can guess, but we frankly don't know at this point. You know, you also got to look at the fact, too, that frankly, he's British. <clears throat> You know, you're talking about Seamus, and Seamus was one thing, but you know, almost five years later, what have they ever really truly done with Wade Barrett except waste his time and our time with him? There seems to be some type of fear or phobia from the WWE standpoint of trying to make a British guy a top guy, which I really don't understand. They're still white, which WWE loves. They still speak English, proper English at that, which the WWE most certainly should love, and they breach... They breach outside of the kind of domestic territory, and they help expand your reach and scope internationally. And you would think for such an important international market like the UK that you would want to have several of your top stars be from that area. And they're just not. The WWE just doesn't want to go there, just is unwilling to go there. And it's something I can't ever really, frankly, figure out. So maybe Neville falls into that category where they're just never really worried willing to go with him. I'm always going to have a concern about Neville's mic work because I most certainly didn't hear anything that was all that impressive out of him when he was in NXT. Now it's something obviously you can work at. It's something you can get better at because let's face it, that was never Seth Rollins' big strength and he got better. It was most certainly never Daniel Bryan's big strength, but again, he got better. You don't have to be tremendous. You don't have to be great. You just have to be good enough to get your point across and good enough to be able to advance the story that needs to be advanced. Now, at this point in time, I most certainly do not believe that Neville has those type of skills. And frankly, from a WWE standpoint, even though I don't always necessarily agree with it, at the end of the day, they want their top guys to be able to handle the stick. They want their top guys to be able to talk in the mic. And that's a significant concern for me with Neville right now. And that's something that he's going to have to get better at and a lot better at in a big hurry. But the two single biggest concerns I have about whether or not Neville could be in a new top star or the next big thing for WWE are Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon. Kevin Dunn, because of him and Triple H, it seems like, in their incessant feud with each other, and Dunn trying to intentionally sabotage NXT. I also look at a guy like Kevin Dunn. I remember what he said years ago about somebody like a John Morrison. All these flips. He's, he's not sports entertainment material. I see him looking at a guy like Neville and all that Mighty Mouse shit that they're talking about with Vince McMahon. I believe Kevin Dunn was a big part of that too. He's like, oh, Vince, that's splendid. Yes, here I come to say the day. I mean, there's just something about Kevin Dunn that makes me think he would take some great pleasure out of taking a guy like Neville and completely trying to shit all over him. And that's a big problem. You're talking about your lead producer of your television product, you know, could be your enemy. That's dangerous. And then the top guy, Vince McMahon. You know, so many things are dependent upon Vince McMahon. And if Vince McMahon looks at a Neville one day, no matter what type of reaction he's getting, no matter what type of matches he's having, no matter how much he's getting over with the audience, no matter how much uh, people like him, if Vince McMahon gets bored with him one day, Vince McMahon doesn't like him all of a sudden, you know, maybe Adrian Neville farts in the wrong direction one day and Vince gets a whiff of it, or maybe Neville sneezes around Vince, you know, Vince could sit there and say, fuck you, I'm going to bury your ass and sabotage you for the next three months and make you not matter. And that's the whole thing. Is there are a lot of guys on WWE roster right now that have big time potential. It's not necessarily about the individual talents themselves. The actual talent roster from a pure talent standpoint is pretty good. I don't think it's the greatest it's ever been. I don't know if I'd say it's great, but it's pretty good. But at the end of the day, you know, if you've got Kevin Dunn working against you and all of a sudden one day Vince McMahon gets tired of you and he's working against you, no matter what else you do, how the hell are you ever going to succeed? So I think Neville could be a star and a nice size star and a big star for the WWE. I just wouldn't get my hopes up too much at this particular point in time because even though some of you might point to Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins, 
Yes, that's true. It did work for them to a certain degree. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to work that well in this case. So I stay cautiously optimistic that Neville could could be a big star going forward because I like Neville. I think he could do some good things for this company. Again, a unique performer, a guy that clearly works hard in the gym, which is important. Um, but I just don't know. I mean, international guy that could help you with the WWE Network, expand your scope uh, domestically and internationally on top of that. But if Kevin Dunn doesn't like you because he doesn't like NXT and Vince doesn't like you just fucking because, then I guess it really doesn't matter.